Good evening, and welcome to our Good Friday service. Um, before we begin, we're going to be doing communion together tonight, so you might want to take this time to go and grab the elements and have them ready. Uh, we will read the Last Supper and we'll take communion together at that time. Let's begin by praying. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are so thankful for the gift of your Son. We are so thankful for the redemption um, offered by his great sacrifice. Lord, help us to understand the gravity of what Jesus did uh, for us, Lord, and uh, to give him the respect and the praise and the adoration that he is due. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I know traditionally when you see me, when we do messages on Sunday, etc., uh, we try and be creative and uh, maybe come up with a different perspective uh, for people. Uh, we try and have some fun, go to interesting locations, and just give you a different way to look at things. On Good Friday, and, and truthfully, for Passion Week in general, for Palm Sunday, for Good Friday, for Easter, I just want to get out of the way. This is not about being clever. This is not about being creative. This is all about what Jesus has done for us and recognizing exactly what he's done for us. So with your permission tonight, we'll read some excerpts from Scripture that will walk us through uh, the Last Supper, the betrayal, and the death and burial of Jesus. Um, We'll be starting in Luke chapter 22, verse 14. When the hour had come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them, With fervent desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At this time, let's take the bread and remember Christ's body broken for us. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Let's remember the blood that he shed so that we might have forgiveness of sins. Let's pray again. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you've given us this reminder, this uh, ordinance, Lord, uh, to do, to remember uh, the, the great gift that you've given us. Lord, never let us take it for granted. And Lord, uh, just let this always be a meaningful time to come to the table and approach you, Lord. We ask that you would create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Prepare us for Easter and prepare us for what you have planned for us. We thank you for your forgiveness. All God's grateful people said, Amen. Then Jesus said, Behold, the hand of my betrayer is with me on the table. And truly the Son of Man goes that is as, as it has been determined. But woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to question among themselves which of them it was who would do this thing. We'll skip ahead to verse 39. Coming out, he, Jesus, went to the Mount of Olives, as he was accustomed, and his disciples also followed him. 
When he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw. And he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. When he rose up from prayer and had come to his disciples, he found them sleeping from sorrow. Then he said to them, Why do you sleep? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. And while he was still speaking, behold, a multitude, and he who was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near to Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When those around him saw what was going to happen, they said to him, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus answered and said, Permit even this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priest, captains of the temple, and the elders who had come to him, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you daily in the temple, you did not try to seize me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Having arrested him, they led him and brought him into the high priest's house. But Peter followed at a distance. Now when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat amongst them. And a certain servant girl, seeing him as he sat by the fire, looked intently at him and said, This man was also with him. But he denied him, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And after a little while, another saw him and said, You also are of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then after about an hour had passed, another confidently affirmed, saying, Surely this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are saying. Immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So Peter went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who held Jesus mocked him and beat him. And having blindfolded him, they struck him on the face and asked him, saying, Prophesy, who is the one who struck you? And many other things they blasphemously spoke against him. As soon as it was day, the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, came together and led him into their council, saying, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he said to them, If I tell you, you will by no means believe. And if I also ask you, you will by no means answer me or let me go. Hereafter, the Son of Man will sit on the right hand of the power of God. Then they all said, Are you then the Son of God? So he said to them, You rightly say that I am. And they said, What further testimony do we need? For we have heard it ourselves from his own mouth. Then the whole multitude of them arose and led him to Pilate. And they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to pay taxes to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. Then Pilate asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him and said, It is as you say. So Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no fault in this man. But they were the more fierce, saying, He stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked if the man were a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod who was also in Jerusalem at that time. Now when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceedingly glad, for he had desired for a long time to see him, because he had heard many things about him, and he hoped to see some miracle done by him. Then he questioned him with many words, but he answered him with nothing. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. Then Herod, with his men of war, treated him with contempt and mocked him, arrayed him in a gorgeous robe, and sent him back to Pilate. 
That very day, Pilate and Herod became friends with each other, for previously they had been at enmity with each other. Then Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, said to them, You have brought this man to me as one who misleads the people, and indeed, having examined him in your presence, I have found no fault in this man concerning those things of which you accuse him. No, neither did Herod, for I sent you back to him, and indeed nothing deserving of death has been done by him. I will therefore chastise him and release him, for it was necessary for him to release one to them at the feast. And they all cried out at once, saying, Away with this man, and release to us Barabbas, who had been thrown into prison for a certain rebellion made in the city and for murder. Pilate, therefore wishing to release Jesus, again called out to them, But they shouted, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! Then he said to them the third time, Why? What evil has he done? I have found no reason for death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. But they were insistent, demanding with loud voices that he be crucified. And the voices of those men and of the chief priests prevailed. So Pilate gave sentence that it should be, as they requested. And he released to them the one they requested, who for rebellion and murder had been thrown into prison. But he delivered Jesus to their will. Now as they led him away, they laid hold of a certain man, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming from the country. And on him they laid the cross that he might bear it after Jesus. And a great multitude of the people followed him, and women who also mourned and lamented him. But Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For indeed the days are coming in which they will say, Blessed are the barren wombs that never bore, and breasts which never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do these things in the green wood, what will be done in the dry? There were also two others, criminals led with him, to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots. And the people stood looking on. But even the rulers with them sneered, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ, the chosen of God. The soldiers also mocked him, coming and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. And an inscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, and said, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Now it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. So when the centurion saw what had happened, he glorified God, saying, Certainly, this was a righteous man. And the whole crowd who came together to that site, seeing what had been done, beat their breasts and returned. But all his acquaintances and the women who followed him from Galilee stood at a distance, watching these things. Now behold, there was a man named Joseph, a council member, a good and just man. He had not consented to their decision indeed. He was from Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who himself was also waiting for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen, and laid it in a tomb that was hewn out of the rock 
where no one had ever laid before. That day was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew near. And the women who had come with him from Galilee followed after, and they observed the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and fragrant oils, and they rested on the Sabbath according to the commandment. It's so strange that we call this day Good Friday. When we read the tragedy of what happened, when we read the brutality of what Jesus went through, not just physical brutality, but emotional brutality as well. Betrayal, hurt, pain, questioning, and death. And we call it Good Friday. Because it was such a good thing for us. Without Jesus' willingness to do these things, we would not have forgiveness of sins. We would not have the ability to follow him for abundant life and eternal life. Thanks be to God for what Jesus went through. It is a testimony to how much Jesus loved the world and how deeply he loves each and every one of us that he was willing to do this. It is a testimony to how much God loved the world that he gave his only son to go through this, that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. I know the love that a father has for their child. I cannot fathom, not for a second, allowing my child to go through what Jesus went through, to go through what we just read. Not for anybody. And yet, God loved you so much that he sent his son. And Jesus loved us so much that he was willing to go through with it. Good Friday. Because Jesus can redeem the grossest and the vilest of acts. Because God can bring redemption through terrible things that happen in this world. Good because the long-awaited prophecy was fulfilled. And the Messiah came to save us all from our sin. Jesus is amazing at redemption. And I hope that you find that out if you haven't already. Um, My prayer would be that you would see what happened here, that you would read what happened, that you would understand how much God loves you, and that you would want to follow this Jesus who loved you so much that he went to the cross to willingly take the sins of the world upon his shoulders and pay a price that we couldn't pay. I can't pay for you because I'm a sinner. You can't pay for me. You're a sinner. We heard over and over, there's there's nothing wrong. Jesus has done nothing wrong. Jesus was fully God and fully man, and yet he never sinned, making him the perfect sacrifice for the sins of the world. It is my prayer that by the end of this Easter weekend, you would give your life over to him. We leave tonight remembering Jesus' great sacrifice. And we leave the story with Jesus dead, sealed in a tomb. 
It's Friday. It is only Friday. Sunday is coming. It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter is asleep. Judas is betraying. But Sunday is coming. It's Friday. Pilate's struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilifying. They don't even know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary's crying. Peter is denying. But they don't know that Sundays are coming. It's Friday. The Romans beat my Jesus. They robe him in scar. They crown him with thorns. But they don't know that Sundays come. It's Friday. See Jesus walking to Calvary, his blood dripping, his body stumbling, and his spirit's burden. But you see, it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The world's winning. People are sinning. And evil's grinning. It's Friday. The soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's feet to the cross. And then they raised him up next to criminals. It's Friday. But let me tell you something. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. But they don't know. It's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross, feeling forsaken by his father, left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? Oh, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. It's Friday, the earth trembles, the sky grows dark, my king yields his spirit. It's Friday, hope is lost, death has won, sin has conquered, and Satan's just a laugh. It's Friday. Jesus is buried. A soldier stands guard. And a rock is rolled into place. But it's Friday. It is only Friday. Sunday is a coming.